Okay, three, two, one. Well, welcome everybody outside and inside of this uh, call we're having here. I have to check my sound here for a second. All right, I'm set now, sorry. Um, yes, so welcome uh, to this presentation that we're having tonight. And I am very excited to um, and honored to um, present to you three fantastic uh, people and a fantastic project. Um, these three people were working on during the last uh, month. I'm uh, David Brewer. For those who don't know me, I'm the creative director of uh, uh, my own studio, a studio for interactive media. I'm personally also using BVVV since a long time. And BVVV is um, yeah, uh, one of the core subjects of tonight. And also I'm founder of the Node Forum for Digital Arts a Festival in Frankfurt dedicated um, to digital arts in general, but also that like, grew out of the community um, around uh, the VV toolkit. And uh, two years ago, I founded with a partner in Berlin, the Node Institute. Um, and yeah, through this, in this function, I'm, I was asked, um, yeah, by this group of people, um, if I would be open to host this presentation and I'm very much open to do so because this is super exciting. Um, yeah, and with me is, um, well, a lot of people know them already, but um, maybe, and hopefully we have also visitors who don't know uh, them yet in person. So with me is Nathan Sinigalia from Italy. You are connected from Berlin. Yes. And um, Nathan is actually an artist. Um, uh, with a strong background in music, contemporary dance, but then also real-time graphics and programming a lot. So he's this mixture of, you know, intermingling the fields in one person and one personality. Um, Nathan is also known um, in the VUV community um, as somebody who, like over the last decade, contributed a lot of um, uh, libraries and note sets that we can, uh, as a community, uh, we can use. Namely, um, in, in the latest um, yeah, months and years, it was Elementa and the UI library and Kairos when it comes to arranging time presets and narrating data of, within the environment. So this is Nathan. And um, then we have Kyle McLean. Uh, Kyle is also in this community since a very long time. Kyle is a media artist and independent researcher currently based um, in Bhutan, joining tonight from Australia. So I think the time difference is huge and uh, probably you have been sleeping just before this presentation. I'm glad the, you're doing this. The sun this has not come up yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, his practice is um, uh, maintaining personal um, uh, projects and then consults also like award-winning studios um, like Graphic Anador and, and, and other like fantastic studios who are actually working um, on open source libraries and computational libraries that he himself as well as Nathan is um, contributing. Here. And the third person is uh, Christian Rikov. Hi, Christian. Hello. Uh, you are based in Schwerin in Germany. Correct. And you studied experimental media design at um, the University of Arts and Media Programming um, at the University of Applied Science in Berlin. And you are focusing on interactive inter installations, uh, mainly in the past. Um, and generative system, kinetic sculptures, I know you have been working or are still working with Artcom a lot. And um, yeah, so you're merging your design skills with code skills. And you joined the VV um, community not too long ago. I, when I'm right, we can talk about this in a little bit. And yeah, I'm very happy that um, you're also here. And we're gathering together to 
yeah, basically celebrate the final, um, or not the final, like the first release of the Fuse. So this everything will be around Fuse tonight. And Fuse, as you describe it, is an open source library for visual programming on the GPU. Built to enable rapid workflows and modular approaches to accelerate graphic logic and computation. So this is obviously like this opens up a field. And um, maybe like before you start with the presentation, and um, I, I will have a few questions uh, to you guys. Um, like Nathan and Kyle, I mean, you have been in the VV world since such a long time developing projects and contributions, um, which became, as I just said, um, yeah, sort of a standard in the industry, while the VV development itself, like the VV group, um, have been working on releasing a complete rewrite of the toolkit, namely VV Gamma, which has been released also not too long ago. So was this the initial um, trigger for you guys to kick this development off, or has this been there before so like what is the story um how this started basically well i think uh like uh i guess you could say that um with the Fourier gamma it's been quite a while that they've been really working on the on the language and really kind of fundamental features that are super interesting but but it's also been the case for some time that if you were used to using the previous version, you had access there to a lot of kind of graphics and shading and things that hadn't been there yet on the on the new version. So there, there was kind of a, a, a need to fill that gap a little bit for people to actually use it for doing graphics shading and, and this kind of thing. Um, so I think I, I actually had originally had some people approach me asking about porting like um, instance noodles and some of these libraries that we had for shading um, over to Gamma. And that was kind of the original scope. And then we were thinking about it and thinking, okay, but what else can we do? We can, we can have the same things, but we can also go further. And then I, I was talking to Nathan about this and we, like kind of had the idea of, of doing this whole whole fuse thing. Um, and I think we were we were actually looking just the other day that, that kind of kicking that off was pretty much exactly nine months ago. Um, exactly. so it, it, like to the day. So um, this is kind of the conclusion of the pregnancy term, I suppose. <laughs> And then pretty early on in that process, uh, Chris came on board um, and has been like absolutely amazing and fundamental to the whole effort. Um, and yeah, I think for the three of us, even though we kind of work in the same field, we, we all actually have quite sort of specialized viewpoints and skill sets. And it's been um, very complimentary that way. I think we, we've found that we can we can do a lot more together than any of us would have done individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, speaking of it, Christian, like what is the, um, what has been attracting you or what has been pulling you into the, well, first VV world, but then secondly, um, yeah, especially the, the, the Fuse development then? Yeah, so basically, I mean, of course I followed like VVVV, like pretty much since the beginning and I work with code, but as I'm pretty much code based, then I come more from processing. Um, yeah, it was kind of attractive, but also I had my other tools to work with. And so I never really got into it. Um, and then like two years ago, I think I had one first project with Schnelle Bunte Builder and like I, I, I got in touch with, with Gamma for the first time and was like obvious okay this makes sense to like really code your stuff but also um, be able to patch object oriented um, so that was far more attractive to me and i was just really waiting for stride to come out because that was clear like okay that would be the game changer when you could really start build projects with it um, yeah and so then as soon as stride came out yeah <laughs> I, I i got in touch and um I was working a lot with Unity recently. And so I was really like attracted by the idea to kind of use the, 
the patching language um, yeah to, to kind of patch shading like so can that you, was really my initial can you elaborate uh, you, you refer to stride um, how this is related uh, to the fuse development and also to the gamma world in general for those who don't know yeah exactly so I mean the first part is kind of of gamma and as, as a graphical visual programming language and and this is like first part to to build like fuse you know because we were not creating this visual language we were building on top of it and the other part is then stride um, which builds, has this beautiful shading system and is a such a nice uh, 3d engine and which is like kind of the other part that we needed to kind of build stride uh, fuse sorry on top of it and Yeah, of course, we were quite early in the process. Like, um, I was really like figuring out this stuff as soon as Stride was has been released, and was really diving into shader programming and and covering stuff quite early, and and finding ways on, on how to use Shader FX from BL first, and then kind of diving into our own kind of um, flavor of how to patch shaders. Um, Yeah, it has been really, really, really nice and um, fun. Not always, but but a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 also like it was such such nice, so nice, you know, to get in, in touch with Nathan and Kyle. I mean, I haven't, I didn't know these guys before. Yeah, and like like Kyle already said, it's like really the three musketeers. Um, it's you know, every <laughs> one of us brings its own skill set, but but we also share. Um, this main interest of computational design and like to get really deep into it. Yeah, and I think it's uh, like the perfect team to, yeah, to, to get, get, to really explore this kind this of This is the spirit, this is yeah. the spirit, this is super cool. Okay, and um, Nathan, like, I know we have, I think it was December when um, We had another, like the first public uh, announcement, basically, we, we presented the roadmap or you guys presented the roadmap of what you, you know, have in mind. And, um, and then the community also came together and uh, the studios and the industry like uh, backed uh, the whole project and, and there's, a, there's a lot of sponsoring going on. So you guys can actually um, also have an income from your development. Would you say that, um, like before you start the presentation, where you actually are? But would you say, like the since December, you are there where you actually have imagined yourself back then? Just to you know, take this in uh, advance. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with the current state. I would say. Um, I think that yeah, um, we are in a good state, and obviously we we, we don't have the entire library like this is a pre-release um, but i think that we we managed to have that foundation that we dreamed since uh, the beginning and so when back then exactly nine months ago we envisioned uh, we envisioned this this moment in time in which we can easily build on top of a foundation and so much easily expand the library and i think that now we are at that moment um, so i would say that it's a it's, yeah it's a great achievement but I... yeah i think we're all super excited to to see it now for the audience um we thought we do it like this the guy's going to present it now and at, at a certain point in, in the presentation i'm going to share uh, the link to the zoom call basically to have a more vivid q a afterwards so For those who have like real questions in the in, like afterwards, you are very much invited to click on that link and uh, be with us for a certain amount of time and put your questions directly. I think it's nicer to have this as a little conversation. Um, please put your name. This is important. Please put your name, like your proper name, and maybe a little code like Fuse presentation when you entering the Zoom call, so we can identify you and um, yeah. Uh, differ you from bots that might try the same <laughs> um yeah and then i would say give it a go and um i don't know who's sharing the screen from you guys but please yeah. go ahead okay here we go 
yeah, we can see it. All right, so yeah, on to the Fuse um, 0 0.1 preview release. Um, I guess I start then. Um, we haven't really checked like who's doing what. So let me go through the first slide and then maybe someone else takes over. Um, Yeah, so just a quick summary on what we will cover today. So we will start with um, an introduction um, of ourselves again, just to give you kind of idea of what we're working on normally, if not on Fuse. Um, and then an overview on Fuse. Then we're going to show you some the, the, the features that we have so far and maybe um, get into the documentation of Fuse, which is like one really important aspect also that we want to cover because it's also about sharing knowledge and not only uh, about sharing, building a library. Uh, then we want to share a vision, like what, what next fields we want to explore with views and also give um, an idea on how we want to work together with the community. So meet the Fuse Lab. Um, we already had a short introduction, but here with some images. Maybe. Yeah, I won't, won't really kind of talk over these things because so like, it's nice to show some some outputs and things, but we kind of already had a had a bit of an introduction. Um, yeah, that's just some stuff we've made. Yeah. Some more stuff. Some more stuff from Natan and some more stuff from me. Um, so you see, we're all kind of working in a similar field. We see a lot of particles and computational visual. So we feel kind of profound and enabled to kind of build that library, not only from development points, but also from designers um, perspective. And I think that's quite crucial to build such a tool um, to kind of already get into the kind of workflows that that other designers would probably like. So let's let's give give you an overview on Fuse. Um, yeah, so what is Fuse? Um, Fuse is an instant and visual programming on language built on VL um, to use a GPU and not kind of work shaders, uh, write shaders and, and build buffers and whatever, and, but make it fast and play freely. Um, so to have rapid workflows and modular approaches, meaning that you as a designer do not need to hassle too much. Like how do you enable, how do you put on a shader? How do you create resources but that you can just directly patch um, which, which, which workflows which you are familiar with in, in VL. Um, and in this way, we want to give people access to accelerated graphics, logic and computation. And yeah, we utilize Stride and VVVV for that. So Fuse and VVVV. So to really say that quite clearly, I mean, we worked really tightly together with the VVVV development team from the beginning um, as we use VVVV um, as language and, and basic foundation um, for Fuse. Um, it was quite crucial to, to get them on board and we had them on board and yeah, they helped a lot with features and other stuff that we needed and debugging. Yeah, we also want to strictly follow um, its always runtime model. So every time you change something, you immediately see what you get, which is like crucial for fast design and programming. Um, yeah, and basically want to have at least almost no compile time or not too much between you and your result. Yeah. Stride is like I already mentioned that at the beginning, the other big part. This is like a nice 3D game engine, which is written in C-sharp and therefore couples quite nicely um, with VVV Gamma. So it's pretty much fully integrated. And we take advantage of a lot of features, not only in terms of shaders, but also the complete rendering pipeline and materials um, and other features um, where we build on top. But a lot of these nice visuals are just an, are also enabled by Stride. Yeah, and then why fuse? Yeah, we, because we want to make it easy 
and we want to have a visual and intuitive access point to the GPU, which is normally quite complex and not so easy to get. Um, and we also want to have like not too many different systems. I mean, if you talk about Unity, you maybe know Shader Graph and VFX Graph, and it's similar in other, um, I guess, game engines as well. So you have like one kind of language to make simulation and VFX and another one to make shaders. And we really want to have a holistic view on this whole thing. So you should only learn one kind of node set and all the kind of features uh, should work probably anywhere. And you should be free to put anything together. Um, yeah, we utilize the object-oriented programming environment of VL. So we, you are free to express and use the features from VL and kind of find new workflows on how to build shaders and systems. Um, and there's something we're really curious about to see like what kind of workflows um, will evolve all of that. Yeah, and then in the end, it's open source because we want to share also knowledge because we share knowledge also from other people. We build on top of, of guys like Inigo Quiles, which a lot of you know, yeah, like Shader Toy and there's so much more and behind the VL community where people develop shaders and stuff that we use. Yeah, maybe Nathan, you get over some features now. Yeah. Amazing. Um, yeah, we got, as, as we said, we wanted to have a, like a, um, a solid, um, basement, uh, so the foundation of use, um, very low level set of nodes. But then on top of these, we would like to explore many different areas. Because yeah, in the end, Fuse is about uh, dealing with GPU resources and ways to operate on these resources. So um, let's imagine, okay, we want to do some procedural geometry. It's just one perspective that you take over the over this data. So you you think in uh, in, in terms of geometry and um, manipulation vertices. Okay, this is one way to look at this um, world. Another domain could be the particles. Particle system is another way to look at another perspective over the GPU data, where you see where we are interested in concepts like a particle, so it's an object which has some attributes. And you want to instantiate millions of them and work with them in, in different ways. So these are all different perspectives over the same uh, material in the end uh, and, uh, and, and methods. Uh, so given the fact that we wanted to have this unified uh, approach to the GPU in general, uh, yeah, we identified still these main domains to start from at least. Um, so yeah, we have a core, as I say, the, which is the, the foundation or the other domains. Then there's procedural noise, which is, it's like a domain that includes, so noise manipulation, uh, Kyle will, will tell you more about it. We have distant fields and remarching, geometry, texture, materials, GP, GPU, uh, particles, fluid simulation. These are all different ways, different domains, um, different perspectives over the same so, um, field of GPU. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so let's maybe start with, with the base thing um, of use, like how, how it fits in. Um, I already said, like we are kind of um, working together with VL and Stride, we build on top of it. and. Like one low level thing really is fuse.net because the base thing of fuse is coded in C sharp. Um, and then out of that, we have the first like kind of node set layer, which is fuse core, um, which is next to VL stride, which is like the kind of node set that um, the VVV devs have um, built to use stride in VL. And then we have various libraries on various levels like math, color, compute, and, and more high level stuff like particles and ray marching. Um, and these kind of build the fuse universe. And we will cover those now in the in the next slide. Um, and just give me, let me give you a 
quick view, and this is really pretty much the only time we're going to hassle you with code, um, but it is there somewhere deep in the system. Um, and this is like kind of how the C sharp code looks. We have like a um, flexible template syntax where we can integrate shaders, um, but also can kind of keep them generic to any type to not um, not to write too many code. And what you also see is the kind of generated shader code that Fuse is generating. So you see a lot of weird IDs and code, which is in the end working, but the shader normally do not look so readable. So it's more like your patch that kind of reflects the logic of everything. Um, so, and this is really just the first glimpse of a lot of nodes and there are many, many more. And these are like the Fuse, it's a Fuse core level. And this is kind of, for example, logic stuff like, um, and or and and switch and if and like kind of split nodes and swizzle nodes and whatever you use really on this low level stuff. So pretty much everything that you need in shaders is there also as node. Same is true for math. So like all the um, HLSL intrinsic functions are covered here. So we have all the math functions, refract, floor, log, whatever. And wherever this is possible, we try to make those functions spectral which means you can put in as many values as you want. So if you add values, you can add like as many as you want, but also for the max function, for example, this would work. You can um, put as many max, as many values in the max function as you want and then get like the maximum out. Yeah, so um, we're going to start just with a couple of the topic areas where um, it's kind of basically functions that you can use and applying to anything. So you can use to create geometry, you can use to do materials, you can use to modulate parameters. And noise is like one of those really fundamental topics that way. So we've kind of designed views really to use this functional approach across the board. Um, so you can you can really use noise to render directly or to modulate parameters. And it's also really integrated with the particles and the fluids. Um, so if we, if we go on to the next slide, you'll actually see for like what, what it actually looks like when you're visually programming. Um, so, I mean, this is just kind of to show some, some little samples of what some of the noise functions look like. Um, but they're quite sort of high level node sets. We wanted to show you this kind of machinery first of what goes on under the hood, but this is what it, what it's actually like when you're, when you're patching with the library. Um, there's kind of a lot of those standard noise, uh, basis functions implemented there and also some more exotic ones. Um, one thing that we've kind of been working on a lot is really using tooltips to help kind of visually communicate what's going on. So you can see. Um, like in the patch there, you, you've just got kind of these thumbnails and those are, are like live previews. So if we do a little bit of patching later, um, you can, can see some of that in action. Um, but that's been kind of really interesting and something we want to push a lot further. Um, you can see like, for example, there's as well as the kind of standard 3D and 2D views, there's some, some kind of graph views there and that sort of thing can be really, really useful for, for debugging and, and knowing what's going on. Um, yeah. Uh, for sign distance fields, um, if you're not familiar with them, they're basically just like a like a type of function that kind of defines an area of space. Um, and again, like the noise, we've really taken an approach where you can you can use them everywhere, so you can do all sorts of things with them. Um, they're also really well integrated with things like the particles and the, the fluid simulations. And um, we, we kind of want to really uh, document everything in detail. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. But um, I would just mention if you're kind of just getting started out with views that the, the SDF section is kind of where we, we wanted to try doing the documentation style that we would like for the whole library first. So that's kind of the best documented part at the moment. Um, so it might be something to, to check out when you're getting started. Um, yep. Um, that's just like some of the, some of the kind of primitives or source functions that you can use with SDFs. Um, and yeah, there's like 
all, all kinds of operations and things you can can do with them and they all kind of have these dedicated tool tips again so that you, you can see what's going on. Um, one of the kind of common uses for 3D SDFs is ray marching, which lets you make kind of these crazy surfaces and geometry that would be a little bit difficult or even impossible to do with like traditional geometry workflows. Um, but it's it's quite nice. Like you can you can use that as an approach and mix and, and match it with with like traditional geometry and meshes. You can see on the on the screenshot on the right there the the sphere and the teapot are just normal 3D models, um, and the surface underneath is a ray marched one. And you can see that they're quite well integrated in terms of shadow and lighting and materials. It, it works quite seamlessly. Um, you've got kind of yeah like. PBR shading from stride and lighting from stride that works out of the box. Um, and again, there's quite useful tool tips that you can see kind of steps and in, in, in the middle as well as your output to, to see what's going on. Um, for, for geometry, it can also take like standard traditional meshes and use the same visual patching system to manipulate them. Um, we've got a few more things that we'll, we'll add to this kind of area as well, like, like splines and geometry filters and some of the content basically that we had in libraries for beta, but we're still in the process of porting over. But um, you can still do quite a lot with it already. Um, you can also use all of these same nodes to uh, patch like procedural materials. Um, so, you know, I mean, if you look in the, the patch there, you can see there's this noise node that we're, we're kind of uh, manipulating some of the PBR properties with. Um, but again, that's the same noise node that we could have used for ray marching a, a surface or used for changing behavior of particles. It's really the core kind of tenet of views that these things are applicable across the board. Yeah, so we also addressing uh, compute shading and we have like several le uh, two levels basically um, for compute shading. So we have like basic level where you kind of, as you see here in these example patches have a resource and like, like a buffer and yeah, you have a buffer in and this patch thread and, and this looks pretty, pretty much like a standard like compute operations. So you get values from buffer, you calculate and you set them. Um, but we also have kind of high level system and this is not only uh, allowing you like to, to patch with resources, but you can kind of create attributes and then Fuse is not only building the shader code, but also the resource system. So for example, like in here, you see this kind of struct that we have of, of a particle um, is basically constructed by um, Fuse. And it kind of looks of attributes that you have in your patch and then sees, okay, there's an age attribute, a position attribute and whatever. And then it kind of builds a struct um, and also a buffer and fills it with data for you. And you can just use this attributes then to build your shading logic. And this, in this case, you see kind of a particle system, but it would also just apply for any kind of compute tasks. And you are free to have as many attributes as you want and um, also like of any type. So as you see here, you can have integer float and whatever, but also Boolean. Yeah, and on top of this, we um, have built um, the particle system, which Nathan will now talk about. Yeah. Yeah, this compute system is very exciting because um, that's why we spent a bit more time on this um, because it's really the foundation of so many other uh, possible uh, domains. Like particle system is, is one, a very basic example that everyone think of, uh, but you can really use the same compute system and imagine really building very complex ways to manipulate geometry or operate on um, volumetric textures. Um, it's really powerful. So we focused on that and then we decided to yeah to test it building a, a particle particles domain. 
Um, um, I would say is um, we just started with this. Honestly, um, this is something that will uh, evolve quite quite a lot in the next weeks. I would say, um, and uh, till now we have a set of high level nodes, some emitters, forces, collision, constraints, and integration methods. Uh, here you see some screenshots. Some of them are coming from uh, users from the community that already started to, to experiment with Fuse and uh, there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm um, around this. So if you go to the next, we see here, it's just an example of a, of a particle uh, system patch. Um, as you see on, on the right, there is this uh, render, which is the real time output. And the, on the left, you see the patch that generates that. And the patch, as you see, it's composed by um, different parts. So you can identify different parts like the emission, the simulation, the drawing. But in the end, they are made of these very high level nodes, uh, modules, this noise force, browning force, drag. So very high level nodes, but each one of them obviously has a certain meaning and does something with the particles. Um, so we we built a set of these high-level nodes, uh, but as I say, uh, it's just the beginning, and we're gonna uh, extend quite rapidly um, the node set. So if you move to the next, here I just want to show uh, that it's so so beautiful, I would say, uh, to have this unified um, perspective over over the GPU uh, domain. Uh, because allows you to really um, um, solve certain issues uh, that work in so many different domains, in different areas. So um, here, for example, we we decide uh, we define some attributes for the particles, which are um, given to already with the library. It comes with the library. Uh, but if you open one of them, like the age uh, of the particle in this case, you find that it's nothing more than, than a patch, which is made with one of the low level nodes. So you suddenly realize that you can freely extend the system and add your own attributes to it. And imagine really to be any sort of property of these particles. And it's really easy to, to do it. That's why I'm saying that in the next weeks, we will see a lot of changes, also because we are going to use Fuse for big projects in the next days. Um, and the same approach, uh, it, you can find it also for the, for the forces of the particles. Right? This drag module there, uh, I, posted, I put an image from the previous uh, patch. If you open that module, you see that it's nothing more than, than a patch. Is, is, a, is, a, is a compute shader somehow, it's a logic, compute logic, but it's patched, which means that it's so easy to, to come up with your own uh, modules for your particles, like a weird attractor, and you just can patch it and use it within the same ecosystem of the particles. On, on the right, you see some of the modules that we implemented so far, but we didn't really spend time on, on that, honestly. Um, that's one of the main things that I would focus now. Um, and it's just amazing that it can extend so, so easily now. It's really mind blowing. Fluid, yeah, we also have a, a, a 3D fluid implementation, and GP implementation. Um, this is interesting because we need it for a project. Um, so uh, we took an implementation that was uh, already made in uh, in, in VDV, in Gamma, using Stride. But um, in that uh, implementation, the, the main pipeline of the shader was basically built with shaders, um, like proper shaders important as nodes. So they, those, uh, those shaders are not patched using uh, Fuse. So we, we took uh, those shaders and we kept them there because there wasn't time to to, to replicate the same uh, pipeline in Fuse. 
Uh, but it's also, it was also an interesting experiment because it shows you that you can still com uh, combine different approaches. You can, you can use your own shaders um, and then combine them together with some uh, few other elements. In fact, in this fluid, we introduced some uh, aspects, some new components like a collision well, with SDF or um, yeah, also the, the, the vector field implementation was made with Fuse. And we injected those functionalities into the original pipeline. Um, our plan is to replace the entire pipeline of shaders uh, with Fuse made shaders so that it becomes suddenly more easy to, to extend and change them, explore the functionalities um, that you can, yeah, you can find when you work with a 3D volume. Yeah. Documentation. Are you guys? I, I can I can talk about it. So documentation is a, a key element for us. Um, first of all, because we want to share this knowledge. And, and I think that we have a mature language and, and, and library to, to express very high level concepts. Um, and, and find nice and simple, elegant way to represent it, which is the key to understanding. And so it's the key to knowledge. And that's why documentation is it's a key component of this library that we are really, um, we committed to it. Uh, and we are not the only ones uh, also because we will talk also later, uh, communities joining. Um, they're joining the forces to, to produce high, high quality documentation. So we provide like guidelines and templates for help patches uh, so that people can contribute and maybe go through hundreds of nodes and, um, and prepare specific aimed doc documentation for those nodes and we can uh, basically merge back into the, the main documentation. Of the library. I think I, I kind of alluded to it before, but we, yeah. we went a little bit depth first with the documentation. So there's kind of example patches for all the areas of the library, but the SDFs are kind of a little bit more thoroughly documented at the moment and we want to do the same thing with the other areas. And one thing we very, very quickly realized is that it's actually a very, very nice environment for learning about a concept as well as for learning a particular procedure or how to use a particular node. So we're kind of documenting both those things a little bit. We're documenting some of the stuff that's very few specific about how you do X or how you do Y, um, but also really trying to make an effort to use it as a vehicle for knowledge sharing. And it, it's quite kind of visual and interactive and nice for that. Um, you can really take something that might be very dense when you look it up on Wikipedia or something like this and have it in a really intuitive way. So yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> this is kind of like uh, maybe a little bit more conceptual or philosophical, but in the in the high level, we want to foster read-write culture and encourage collective experiments and creative tooling that bypasses the strictly for-profit corporate model and embodies radical openness and gift giving. Together, we can go further, faster. Word. Yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah, word. I think that's everything. Yeah, and I think we really want to address that um, we're working in a kind of ecosystem. So as we stated um, several times here already, like we haven't we have built fuse on top of, of other tools, um, and we kind of enrich those tools like with fuse. And of course, we are like the three core guys who kind of initial initiated this um, project. But we already have so much help, um, like in terms of sponsoring and, and people just believing that this project um, goes on, goes off. Um, yeah, we have people doing documentation and helping us with communication. And 
Yeah, it's it's really fun and it's motivating, like to to feel the spirit and to feel the drive and and to see like people build projects with it and and like really vivid projects and like really nice visuals and yeah, we're really looking forward um, to extend those and yeah, to see like what emerges um, not only from from us but also from within this community. Yeah, and regarding to this, to also give you the freedom, I mean, it's also important, like what kind of license we use. Um, so we have chosen the MIT license, so for you to have as much freedom as possible while it still maintain um, open source. Um, so you can use it for commercial and non-commercial projects. Um, but that talking about community, um, we also ask you like, if you make, really highly successful projects. Um, we would really ask you like, if you make projects more efficient and you can make better visuals in less time, um, that you maybe take some of the stuff that, that, that you benefit from and maybe share it with Fuse. Because it's like also you share it, you kind of finance, you know, the, the future development of us, you kind of pay back also for the community um, that drives us all. Um, and, and it would really help us to like um, develop Fuse further because um, it's really helping, but it's not covering all of, of what the work that we put in. It's, it's still like motivation is still gaining knowledge, working with other people um, drives the community, but definitely um, having more there's, resources definitely helps. There's, there's still so much more we want to do and not even just in a linear process of like adding more features to the library that people can use, but also in terms of like fostering more participation and building community and capacity around it. Um, yeah, you know, there's, there's like a, a nice kind of momentum there that we want to see grow. Um, and so, yeah, we, we just ask that if you, consider yourself a good person and someone who lives a life of ethics to, to consider helping the, the greater good. Yeah. Okay, so last point pretty much coming to an end um, is now the roadmap. Like what have we covered so far? I mean, today is our preview release. Um, so what will be the next steps? Um, Currently, we have the core architecture and node set. We have some high level node set for some of the domains, which give an idea um, of how, how Fuse is working on those levels. Um, we also showed like with the sign distance field domain, um, how nice uh, documentation can work to not only see how you use um, the nodes, but also gain a deeper understanding um, of the topic itself. So you can learn a lot of sign distance field. Um, and for the next three months, we, um, we will work with Fuse now in, in some really major projects. And within those projects, we will, um, yeah, we will be able to discover like really deeper topics and, and have more time to reflect on specific domains and, and really dive in. Um, while we're doing this, we will also look into um, improve the integration into VVVV and also to extend all the existing domains and also cover new domains. We're also looking forward for the community, what, what they will provide in terms of documentation, but maybe also um, as functionality and maybe certain domains can also be covered by, by other people, not only us. So if you're interested, for example, like in procedural geometry or things like this, it's not something that we're gonna address in the near future. It's something we are curious about, but if you are curious as well, and yeah, just feel free, go ahead and, and we see if we can um, join it. Yeah, and we're targeting um, the full feature release, or not full feature, I guess it will never be full feature, but um, kind of version mm -hmm. one and the first quarter of um, the next year. Yeah, talking about funding, we already had a lot of sponsors who supported us, um, got some money, got a lot of motivation and really helped like over some long stretches of serious work also um, 
to, to get things forward and also have some time. So basically this allowed us really to address things and not always be busy with other projects, um, but to really focus on certain things and get it forward. So thanks a lot to, to all of the guys here um, to also making this possible. It's really appreciated. Yeah, so we come to an end. Thanks for, for, your, for your interest. Um, if you want to go deeper, look at our website. It's online, the Fuse Lab IO. Um, you have some links there to the GitHub page, to some social network. It's all pretty much in the beginning. Um, but you can discover things from starting there. And of course, also look at um, the other tools, visualprogramming.net for BBBB and stride3d.net for the stride engine. Yeah. And now we're ready for some question answering and also maybe for some patching session to really solve some stuff in action. Well, thank you so much, guys. I mean, this is this is massive. This is, I mean, except like a lot of uh, uh, laughs and and amazed uh, smileys in the chat. We have, we haven't seen a question. Probably people are very like uh, stunned. And um, I, I think this is this is such a this is such a development for for our field and for the community. This is. I mean, this is a major, major step um, after the release of the VV environment uh, to have now a library that actually brings us back on track um, when it comes to visual uh, computational render outputs. Um, for everybody out there, like we are open uh, for questions at any time. You can also like come to our uh, Zoom call here. I posted the link into uh, the chat and um, also in the element chats. And uh, hopefully you guys are joining in for some detailed question. And speaking of patching session, I mean, the, I think the question is obvious. Um, obviously, like as somebody even with VUV, uh, little knowledge, but also um, for the for the newbies, like how would you like? Where's the first touch point? How do I get onboarded to? Like, how can I use it? Like, what? What's the, maybe you can showcase this shortly, like where to start, you know, like you open VV and then what's, what's next. And I mean, we saw a couple of screenshots, but I think it would be cool to like have a little journey through um, where can I find what, you know, so at least we have a starting point. If this is possible for you, that would be amazing. Yeah, Kyle, I think would you maybe give a first starting point on, on first patches? Can you do some screen sharing? Uh, yeah, just give me a moment. Um, I would say also just like if you're completely new to the whole thing and like you, you need to know how to install 4B and everything like that, um, we did actually make a short video that explains this. Um, and I've, I've just now pasted the link for that into the YouTube chat as well. Um, Meanwhile, Simon joined. Simon Holden, welcome. Well, there's a lot of congratulations going on in the chat. I don't know if Christian and Nathan are actually following it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the chat open. I see that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> it's really amazing. Yeah, but it's also like what what the feedback already from the community over the last days, like, um, yeah, it was really motivating us to push this presentation and the website and like all the all people were celebrating like every step so far and yeah, really how to get it done. Yeah, I think it, there's, um, some like an, another obvious question that comes to mind. So is it is it like you're patching? Like generally speaking, I think um, I was reading just some on the on the chat here. 
Um, so it's actually generating shader code in the background, right? Is that yes, so at, the, at the very kind of high level, the, the idea of it um, is that you're kind of uh, programming visually. So you're using this kind of patching metaphor, um, but under the hood, it's actually generating this shader code, which is kind of, you know, that, that very scary screenshot Christian was sharing right at the beginning. That, that's kind of what the, what the product or the output of it is. Um, and that's been kind of quite integrated with the, the 4V gamma stride implementation. Um, so, I mean, a lot of it's stuff that you could also do on the CPU, but the advantage of the GPU is it does all of this stuff much, much faster. Um, I've just started doing a screen share. I don't know if you can, yeah. if you can see. Yeah. Okay. So th this is kind of, yeah, what, what, what the actual, what the actual patching <laughs> environment looks like. Um, I mean, this particular patch doesn't have like a render output, but I just wanted to open it first to, to kind of show, uh, particularly for people who aren't actually familiar with 4D. Um, when you open it, you'll also have this help browser window open up as well. Um, and it's kind of like, we, we won't really cover today, like just the basics of how to patch in the 4 environment. That's kind of a, a big topic. Um, but if you, as soon as you open it up, you have this, this help browser, you can go into, into learn. And it really has a lot there kind of explaining the, the basics of how everything works. There's example patches, there's there's videos, um, so all of all of that is kind of really good for getting started. Um, this patch I've got open now is kind of like one of the ones where it's just also explaining a little bit like um, the the point of a particular concept or thing. Um, and yeah, you know, you can you can see basically I can I can sort of zoom in and change things and. You get that kind of instant instant feedback. Um, one thing I'll, I'll mention about all, all of uh, these tool tips is that uh, they kind of run like a little bit separate from the, the render output. Um, like if I open another patch that um, has like a render output as well, I can show you what I mean. Um, but basically they, they kind of run in the background. So the, if you're using like real time changes, the, the frame rate on the little tool tips might not be kind of quite as fast, but they're really designed not to block the frame rate of your your actual render. So that'll that'll kind of always run like at a, a much higher performance of what you want. Um, so we can see here, like uh, this one, for example, is a patch illustrating like often people use noise and SDFs. Um, and so it's kind of explaining how you can do that, but also some gotchas or things to be aware of, you know, like uh, the more noise you add to an SDF, the less accurate it is. And so this is like a way to show that you can push it to a point. And if you push it too far, then you'll get some artifacts. So really useful things like that, that you can then kind of apply in, in the, the patches that you make. Mm -hmm. Um, I might just show like uh, very quickly before passing on the baton, um, maybe another Ray March one that is just kind of shaded a little bit more nicely. Um, I apologize if our presentation's been like very text heavy and not showing too many visuals. We've been like in a little bit of a kind of mad rush to, to get the, the library ready. So I know it would have... Uh, it would have made sense to do like a little bit more kind of teaser videos and things like this, but uh, I'll show like just quickly one of the patches here that um, I think used in one of the slides, for example. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, really pretty simple like the whole material is just patched here with an, a single noise uh the actual kind of surface on the bottom here is basically this function here and then we just have like the kind of other other geometries um if i uh make another 
Ray March node here. I'm just using this one as like a debug view, but I just want to show you. Um, I mean, you don't need to necessarily worry if you're not interested in shader code about the shader code that's generated. Um, but maybe for some people, it's it's interesting. Um, so, for example, this this kind of surface here that we've made, if we uh, if we wanted to actually look at what's generated from it, we can do that. Um, I'll just switch to this like debug view, and we should get like the. I think for the shader code, you need to take the other pin. Um... Ah, yeah. So it's just a, the second pin of the ray march yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. So again, this isn't something that you really need to take care for or worry about as a as a user, but it's um, just kind of showing you what what what's actually like happening under the hood. So uh, basically, this this shape that we've patched here and the ray marching uh, that all gets compiled into into a shader like this, basically. Uh, so it's it's really cool. I mean, like obviously doing this as text-based is the standard way and is totally valid as an approach as well. Um, but you're very free to sketch very quickly and fluidly like this. Um, and you can really kind of reconfigure the way these actually very large shaders work just on the fly. Um, so that, that's just kind of, I guess, like at a, at a high level, the, the workflow or the, the output or what it actually does. So users, um, do users have to actually install Stride? Um, probably yes, but then does it, does it, uh, is it necessary to, to have it running in the background as a game engine or is it like building on top of it and just accesses it? it, it um... Well, Stride's been quite well integrated into 4B Gamma already. Um, so, I mean, again, for the, for the really particulars of how to install it and set it up, I'd probably just kind of refer to that, that video that we've linked already. Um, but basically, uh, if you, um, yeah, you're, you're not having like a hacky process where, you know, you're running three different tools in parallel and they need to communicate with each other somehow or something like that. Um, Stride's really well integrated into, into 4D, the environment I'm using here. And then Fuse is just a library that you use in 4D. Uh, so it, it's quite kind of, um, yeah, tightly, tightly coupled, I suppose. So can you show like how to reference the library? Maybe for those who don't know VV so much, I think we have a couple of people maybe from different worlds. So when you install VV, it's not coming with it. It's like you have to reference it and download it. Yeah. Um, so you've got uh, like in, basically it, it comes in the, the form of a nougat. Um, Nathan, do you maybe want to explain the process for this? Uh, I, I would yeah. say really like the, the, the kind of best step-by-step -step way is to just follow the video. But um, ba basically, if I, if I go like uh, in Manage Nuggets here, uh, you can browse like on Nuggets Online and you can look kind of like this one is called vl.fuse. Um, and once... It, once you've got them like installed, then basically on, on that machine, if I make a, a completely new fresh patch, um, I can just go to dependencies. Oops. So you're saying it's actually online now? Yes, yes. So you could- And, and then we can it. just select <laughs> like basically any of the ones. So if I wanna make a new patch using Fuse, I can just click here. And then I've got all of the, the fuse nodes should be available already. So everybody out there can already directly start playing with it. Yeah, yeah. They would say, cool. So this goes out to the world. So let's say somebody you know, is into it. How can people hook up to the discussion about it? Like how, how can I reach out to you guys? How to give feedback? How, how do you plan to actually you know, 
have user feedbacks going into the development? So I, I would point kind of first to the website just because everything else is like linked from there. Um, but in terms of like feedback and working together on it, uh, we've got like a like a element chat, which is is probably the the best place for that sort of thing. Um, and I think that's also linked from like the the readme. Um, I might just grab a like I'll, I can show in the browser quickly a couple links that maybe it's uh, let's show the website. To, yeah, so. It, let me just uh, resize here. So this is uh, the fuselab.io. And um, here you, you've got like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you've got a bit of info about the whole thing, but there's also um, links to, to, the, to the repo and to the social media things. And if we, if we hop on the, the GitHub one for a moment, um, then you've got, uh, you've got kind of links here, like for the, for the Nougat page. Um, this is the, the chat I was mentioning before. Um, if you go in there, there's actually like quite active discussion and feedbacks going on, um, this also has like some some of the basic kind of instructions again on on how to install. Does um does anyone else want to show like a little bit of a little bit of kind of uh, visual output or anything? And I know we've probably been a little bit dry in that department so far. Um, uh... I can show a bit of patch. Yeah, yeah, we can we can uh, chat if you want a moment to to open something. So any any um like questions or anything in the meantime? Well, there's an obvious question: Is it Windows only at the moment? And during I think the answer is at the moment yes, as I understand it. Um, but that there's like some some development around this. All right, can you stop sharing screen? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, do you see the screen? Yep. Okay. I just opened one of the help patches. Um, just to show you, yeah, another example of how nicely you can integrate uh, different words like uh, SDF um, there's this this one is a, is a, is a patch uh, it's a module which contains this node that we created in, into this head patch which is uh, some which is what we see here it's a sign distance field um, that describes this slowly moving uh, surfaces in the space. Uh, so yeah, you got a, a sign distance field as an output. And here we are using it in a part of the system that we made here with some nodes with a meter, some forces, and plus this collision nodes that take care of taking the SDF and multiplying and colliding with it. So if you enable the particles, now you see that they're simply just colliding with this time distance field that we created. And doing this with, with another approach like geometry days or whatever it would be in the same posture. Uh, so it's very convenient. You can get crazy in imagining any sort of um, time distance field and you know, manipulating whatever parameters. <laughs> And particles simply react to it. It's, it's amazing. You, or you simply, if you disconnect, for example, the, the particles go through, you can see them, but you don't collide anymore. Okay? You connect this module, then the, the particle complicated will be re uh, re evaluated 
and we could see a dysfunction of the position we just did. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very easy to play, uh, so much fun, so very science and skills. And we come up with ways to, to use that. Um, it's the part of the system, it's the fluid. Um, it's really, really, really cool that everything comes together. Then you need to play around. That's an example. Or let me show you. I would like to do some questions also. If there are. Yeah. Also, some people in the Zoom call. Where are they? Simon and Christina, are you with us? Joining just to listening, or do you have a particular question? Maybe. Doesn't seem so. Um. How about physics? Have you thought about this? Is this something on the roadmap in the future? Or is it, am I missing something? Did you think about this? Well, physics uh, is such a wide uh, <laughs> domain. And you can already implement something, sort of physics simulation uh, with the complete system that we have. Because in the end, it's just, imagine like a rope simulation. It's nothing more than a bunch of points connected with certain kind of relationships to each other. And this is something that you can really touch in our system. I mean, so, particles and fluids can like combine and collide with uh, SDF surfaces already now out of the box. Um, but yeah, I guess like if you're more asking about like a fully fledged physics simulation system like, like Bullet or something like that, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's something we've thought about, but it's probably kind of not first up on the agenda. That's a pretty, pretty big undertaking in itself. Yeah, and I would also say there's like really advanced stuff from NVIDIA on this, which is integrated into other um, yeah, game engines or whatever, and that might be also be integrated into Stride. So I think that part would probably be a level where it would be getting too deep and where it would make more sense to utilize the work from other people. But uh, that said, it's it's more oriented, I think, in toward, towards the VFX direction. So I mm. think like physics really regarding meshes and um, like gel, gel simulation or stuff like this, what, what you really see there on, in, I mean, if NVIDIA is providing it, they are directly aware of their hardware and how to implement it best. Then I think that's, that's difficult to compete with. So I think our interest is more, to make it really playful, flexible, and um, yeah, just just make people um, enable them, yeah, to create nice visuals. Very good. Any more questions? Anthony is asking: Can one use the low and high level compute traders patching for audio processing? <laughs> Well, it's an in interesting question. I hadn't actually I mean, thought about it. <laughs> I, I thought about it actually. I did like many years ago, trying to, to, to come up with some GPU generated sound, uh, like generator or sort of. And now I see that uh, in the end, this complex system is really nothing more than enabling uh, patching computers. So. And this, by the way, is the image that we, we use for the website. It's just a patch, it's this patch here with a sign distance field part that creates this shape here that dynamically changes. Um, full simulation that collides to these, um, and then a part of the system that runs through this uh, full simulation and also collide with the sign distance field there. So, this is one of the other examples that we can find. Coming back to the question, I well, the computer system um, is nothing more than patching computer shaders. Computer shaders are very multiple uh, domains, so you can yeah, you can generate 
which is the big bad guys. Um, back in the days, Super Nato was, uh, yeah, I created some shaders that were generating uh, maybe an FFP, and then I was reading back because there's also a way to read back data to the CPU from the GPU. So we can generate something very complex on GPU and then read it back on the CPU, maybe some way to do it cheaply. Um, cheap. um, and then you could use that to generate some model. The core thing is that what we wanted to, to achieve is a system that is really not goal oriented and says done for that specific purpose, but it's more like it just gives you a path to explore things. So, yeah, why not? Yeah, I think there was also a question about emitters, attractors, and um, collision detection. Um, so, if let me answer that. Um, I mean, we're using SDFs a lot. Um, so basically using SDFs for collision detection. Um, so basically this is what you see here currently in the patch um, from Nathan. Um, and we do this because SDF, you basically have a box, you have a plane, you have a sphere, you know, you already have a lot of kind of geometry covered. And so we basically, we just need to provide one collision um, node and then you can provide any kind of SDF. And as you saw with this like repeat kind of SDF, you know, where the particles were moving through a lot of like these kind of um, boxes or pads or whatever you want to call it. So you see, that's already a flexible approach for colliding. And we have the same approach also for attractors. And there's a node um, like conform um, to SDF. And this is then kind of um, attractor, but also allows you to kind of keep them on a surface. Um, I don't know if Nathan can open this. Yep. And this conform to SDF is far more flexible than a, a usual attractor because you kind of have it all in there. You can attract, you can um, move away, or you can move to the surface and you can also mix it. Um, so you can also create like really nice variations of attraction and um, attracting to surface with this, with this particular node. And I think this is also kind of how, how we see the system. I mean, building, working with these attributes, it's really easy to build your own forces or whatever you want to apply to your particles. And you can change the color, you can change the size or whatever. So it's not only bound to forces, but you can also change change particle attributes, for example, on the fly based on velocity or whatever. Um, and I think we will more provide more, more yeah, complex forces like this conform node or the collision or also the fluid, but then leave it up to you to yeah, like build your own really custom forces where you address like your own special needs. Yeah, as we say, I mean, as I said in the presentation, we really didn't spend time building this model, but now, Quite trivial to understand uh, because uh, it's decades, it's 15 years that we do this kind of uh, stuff with particles, so we know exactly what are the, the, the algorithms and the logics, so we just need to implement them quite, quite easily. So, yes. there's a little discussion going on in the chat about exporting what you do in Fuse. Can you say some words about that? Like, is it possible to reuse what you've been doing there in other softwares, meaningful? Or have you tried that? Or is it something on the radar? Was the question about like exporting it to import somewhere or about like making an EXE? Well, it wasn't really specified. Um, there's a little discussion going. Um, yeah, I guess if you want to export the mesh, for example, then this is currently not possible, but this is something um, yeah, where we're also interested in um, to kind of sample the SDF and build a mesh from it. Um, so there are algorithms for it already, and, but they're not yet implemented. But these are like also kind of the challenges um, where we could also if you have, if you want to support this, if you want to give it a go and implement it yourself, um, 
and kind of see if you can export meshes from SDFs, then yeah, you're welcome to look into it. And, and then we can see if we can integrate it uh, into Fuse or also support you. And this is like, yeah, valid for any other topic as well. And does it export? And I guess as far as exporting like an EXE or something, um, that hasn't kind of been our focus so far. Like that's not what we're really paying attention to, but actually it, it it should, it should be something that, that you'd be able to do ultimately. Since VUV is coming with an exporter. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, 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 basically the answer is yes, but it's not something that I would say is kind of ready to go out of the box. It's not something that we're like currently testing or something. I imagine there might be a some some things to kind of iron out with that or yeah. something like that. Yeah. But yes, in the in the in the big picture, you should be able to do that. Um, I, I did see some other people who like use other tools and things also asking like if this can be used as like a shader composer that you then use like the shader elsewhere. And um, uh, the the short answer is no. But having said that, I mean it, it does actually make like a valid shader code. So you can take that and then use it where you want. Um, the only gotcha is that, you know, you, you then from your side need to take care of things like setting up the draw calls and providing the inputs. And even though it's valid shader code, you know, that, that still needs the context of the other things around it to really make it work. Um, so, I mean, yes, you, like, like I showed in the patch, you can just grab the code that's generated by it, um, but it, it's not like super trivial to then use that somewhere else. You could, but you would you would need to like build a little bit of support around it. Yeah. Mm. Also because I mean, th this is the thing you know, that this kind of level of visual programming hide from you a level of complexity is sometimes it's mind blowing. So you see just a simple graph, simple like particle system, a graph with some logics there, but under the hood is quite complex. And you, you could come up with a massive shader with a lot of functions and inputs that simply in your patch, you, you, you don't perceive as complex because uh, you just perceive that the simplicity of the logic uh, into this nice, simple representation. So uh, that's the, the powerful thing of the, 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 the whole point of this, uh, this library is mainly that, to be really, yeah, to be free from this complexity and and freely explore some higher domain, some higher way of dealing with data uh, without being concerned with implementation problems and technicalities. Uh, yeah, that was the intention. Well, any more questions outside world? Grant Moore is basically going back to the to the export question, like referring to a use case, like could I export Alembic caches um, of a simulation? Uh, like, would this be possible? Like, potentially, like let's say to use in uh, in Houdini, for instance. It you know, would absolutely I know be that, possible I know that... to implement. It's not kind of currently there out of the box, yeah. and probably yeah. what what would do much sooner is just like an OBJ export, um, just because that's much, much simpler to implement. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for, for something like Alembic, it, it could be something that could, could look at adding as a feature down the track. Um, like that's probably a good example of one where it'd be, it'd be kind of cool to have like a, a project that has need of that and use that as a way to, yeah. to kind of support. Yeah. Yeah, so it seems like uh, reusing what you do in other pipelines is one of the topic. That's a major feedback, I guess. Um, yeah, I think if nobody else is asking questions, is there anything from your side you want to add if you recap maybe what we forgot? Um, from my side, <clears throat> I'm pretty much through with my questions. I think uh, the main thing I'd, I'd just like to restate again is uh, that we're all like super, super grateful to all of the people, um, both like studios and individuals who were really generous and giving a lot of trust in supporting us to do this kind of initial development. Um, and 
yeah, super excited. Like this is kind of just the beginning. And so, yeah, I think uh, over the, the next periods, so we'll, we'll be able to also see a lot more kind of participation in terms of people helping out with making more content for the different parts, helping with documentation, everything like this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think an obvious follow up and um, we can plan this uh, very soon is doing a proper workshop, getting people on board it to actually use it. It would be yeah. amazing. So I promise to push you to do that. <laughs> yeah, please yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So um, maybe maybe you guys can show once the um, the URL for the Riot Chat. I think that's an important channel to know. If you go on the website uh, in the contacts. In the contacts down there. Okay. Yeah, there are all the information, all the channels to reach. That was just uh, the thefuselab.io. All right, then thank you so oh, much, guys. I just saw someone saying they're going to have to install Windows in order to play with this. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> well, this is how it works. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully in the next future, there will be some news about this. Because yeah, yeah, it is, is there's something on the back burner. We will be opening up soon to those other platforms. Well, then I'm thinking you, I mean, how can we thank you for doing this? I mean, this is obvious that everybody should be super thankful, especially with the license model. And like, this is massive. And yeah, we're curious what the future brings and uh, hope to get as many people as possible on board to everything. And um, yeah, we'll talk next time and we'll be back hopefully with the workshop. And um, thank you so much for hosting us again. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, welcome. Appreciate it. All right. Then see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.